first look and first car wash for the SVJ, man. Look, I need a car wash really badly and I didn't know where to go. But my guy Jose from Billionaire Barber hooked me up. Billionaire Auto Spot, powered by Billionaire Barber with my man's Alex. Thank you, you fresh. Thank you, Fresh. Appreciate you, I appreciate bro. the support, man. Listen, man, Love. they did a fire job. I'm going to bring Sika out here with his ass with a hell pussy because that's just not a hellcat. Anyhow, <laughs> um, yeah, they did a good job, man. Really good job. Really good job. We seeing Rory? You look good? Yep. Looks you, nice. You hungry now? Nah. <laughs> nigga don't eat that's nothing, bro. Like a diet, that's why. Nigga, diet. diet for what, nigga? You're skinny as hell, bro. Diet for what? Get muscles. <laughs> I see him wearing the DRs. Okay, okay, okay. I see you, nigga. Yeah, man. Car is clean. I brought Hero in here, bro. Hero's hair was everywhere, so shout out to these guys here, man. It was mad, mad dirty. Y'all boys snap. Appreciate All right, man. We're out. Peace. And, and that's, that's smart. focus on the work, you know? So you ask the right questions, and that, that gets you there, you know? Okay, let me ask you this. Be honest. Don't cap. Back when I first met you, you're probably like, yo, this is a guy from Barbados, a skinny black kid, mm -hmm. really speak English. He's coming here with this type of, like, drive, but he's actually going to make it. You're probably like, you know what? I don't know about this guy. What do you, what do you think by that? When he first met me. What did I think of you back when we met? Yeah. I, I still think the same thing of you. You're still stuck in the instant gratification loop. Okay. I'm just being honest. No, no. Like, I'm, I'm, tell I'm, it to I'm me. I'm being honest. Like, yeah. you're still stuck in the instant gratification loop. I'll tell you something. This is very true because there's a lot of people watching this. I know you guys get you're, you're popular in your podcast and your segment of what you do. Yeah. I'll tell you something very simple. There's two ways to grow in life for the long term and the short term. Mm -hmm. a, a simple example of that is a guy wants something very expensive today. Like, like you, you see this landscape that you're in. You want to participate and you go, I want this world now. Like, I want to be cool. I want to be part of this. So you go and lease this rules and you pay a significant amount of money for that lease. You don't pay attention to the intricate cost of that lease because you want this car now, right? Mm. What happens is you're not helping yourself. You're hindering your 10 years from now. You're not buying a cheaper 100K car, riding it out, getting a 150K car, riding it out, getting a 250K car and letting your growth lead the way. You're letting your emotions lead the way. And what happens when you do that is not that there's something wrong. I mean, listen, we're all kids. When I was a kid, I was overspending on cars. You know, like we want stuff. We get pussy, we get all types of stuff. Like this is what we do, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is part of the culture we live in, right? Like what you are, your status, these things matter. But reality is these things are a tool. And, they're, they're, and if you can hold yourself from trying to fit in with people you're truly not part of, you are going to honor your own success. And I'll give you a good example. There's guys that ride Lamborghinis that put SVJ logos on them. The average person doesn't even know the truth, right? Like, so they'll be like, oh my God, you, you know, I know I have a friend, this is SVJ. And we look at them and we laugh at them. And we're like, what, why are you doing that? Like, it's not necessary. <laughs> By doing that, you're not just making a fool of yourself. You're disrespecting yourself. Because what you're saying is the Lamborghini I earned, which is also phenomenal, that also puts me in the 2% of the population at a young age. That's trash and I don't believe in its value. Mm. Instead, I want to fit into something I'm not, right? So you disrespect your own growth by attempting to get ahead further, and, but you're not really ahead. You're attempting to fit into something you're not. And this is very important because let's say you have an SVJ mm -hmm. and not a base event to door. There's a 500K difference between the two, like, you know, in, in general from a yeah, retail huge, price. Huge gap. Yeah. yeah, huge gap. It's like two versus one, right? There are different types of buyers. Mm -hmm. There's a, 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 and there's nothing wrong with buying a base event to door, but I'm saying you bought that versus an SVJ. These are different buyers. When that person, this is your ticket indoors. When, once you wear a $400,000 watch and you go somewhere, and you don't have the ability to participate in that meeting because you're really broken, you're trying to pretend mm -hmm. because you have this and you borrowed it or whatever it is. People can see it. Well, not only people see it, but now you've shunned yourself out of that meeting and you're not invited again, mm. right? You killed your own chance. But if you would have waited two years or if you would have been authentic and you would have walked in and you said, hey, listen, my wallet size is just this, they might have found different value for you. You might have been able to participate from a different lens and earn your stripe and beat it. And so what young people do today, and this is something that was dangerous back then that I told you is important, 
is that the instant gratification mindset of these things are important, they're not. They're important for image, I understand there's a marketing thing, etc. But it's also important to slow down sometimes and position ourselves for 10 years from now to ensure we can keep growing rather than have these spikes where we're like, oh, the business is doing great, SVJ. Oh, the business is doing bad, let me downgrade one car. Oh, business is doing good, back to SVJ. Oh, business is average, okay, recession, we're gonna ride it after. That's how you lose because these transactions constantly make you piss away money that you can't afford to. Because if you're in growth phase, you need that money, you need to reinvest it, you need to get in business, you need to go there. Mm. And so people see these things and they want this level before they get to the entry level. Like they don't want a 570 or a 765 LT because their friends have 765 LTs. And they don't stop and say, hey, my friend's gonna sink. He, he shouldn't even have that car. And like, yeah. they just go, well, he has it, so I gotta have it because we hang out and you know I can't be seen without the same thing. And, and that's the problem. We don't live individual lives for ourselves. We live lives for what others think of us. And that's how we lose identity. You know, I talk about this a lot in my book, Third Circle Theory, but that's how we lose Very good book. our identity as an individual and we never build it because we try to adapt into identities. And here's the problem. We adapt in identities that aren't even real. These other people don't even have identities. You know, mm. we think they do because they have more stuff than us. But they're so lost too. It's a character. Right, it's a character. Well, yeah. they're flawed character mm -hmm. and we're trying to mimic their flawed character. Like imagine how bad that is yeah. that you're trying to mimic someone who they themselves is like not going to get you anywhere if you become anything like them, you know? So that's why it's dangerous. Yeah, it's funny. I met some people that I looked up to, you know, obviously like mm -hmm. celebrities, obviously, you know, most of it is a facade and it's like, bro, like this person I was trying to be like, like they're struggling. They're really but, not happy. But, but, but that's the problem. That's what I mean. Like yeah, when yeah. you portray this image, yeah. like you're expected to live up to it, right? So when you have your friends driving these cars, they're paying 20 grand a month for a car because they make 25 grand a month for 30 grand or even 50 grand. Mm -hmm. But they don't have real capital saved. They don't have the ability to participate. You all go somewhere, you go, oh my God, we can buy this boat together and like suddenly make a million bucks. You're like, everybody's throwing 200 and we'll buy. Well, that guy doesn't even have 200, right? Like, right. But he's expected to, you know, he's in that circle mm. and he's not real. So now everybody sees it, right? They're like, oh, you know, uh, I'll show in like 80. You're like, why? Like, just put it like, like why? Like, what, what's the difference? Like, you're not that poor, but he is, right? So he's trying to earn his way into the ticket ahead. And the problem is it is one making him make bad financial decisions he can't afford to make at that point. Cause, oh, maybe I'll put in 200. Let's say you all lose the money you can afford to, you know, like, like I said, like I can afford to lose a hundred grand on this, I wipe my ass. Another guy buys it, it loses 50, a hundred grand on this car. And he goes, oh my God, what did I do? Now I can't sell the car. You know, I'm upside down on the payment, right? Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, it was a tax write-off, fuck it. You know, here's a new one. I got the new one on order, the other one coming in. Like, I don't give a shit, you know? But I couldn't play this game early on, right? Like early on when I was poor and I was growing, one car at a time good financial decisions, not the cars that I wanted, not the cars that were gonna be like, PJ's the richest guy, no. PJ had a nice car, nobody could disrespect that. I valued what I had. I wanted to stand out, I would modify it slightly and be like, this is different, it's mine, it's my character. Yeah. That was it. Mm. I didn't need to play a game I couldn't afford to play. And that is the key. The key is to play an authentic, real game and to allow people to find you that are authentic like you. And so the, the big issue, when, I, when you told me back then, an identity issue comes from this need to fit into something without wanting to take the steps necessary to, to become that person. Journey, yeah. Fitting in without becoming is very dangerous because it creates an identity crisis. But becoming and then finding a fit is just a fact of life and how humans evolve. That's like all those crypto millionaires that had money and they blew it and I was like, oh wait. Well, how is that any different than, than, a, than a football player who never understood money was given a $100 million contract, right? Over five years, he's gonna make 20 million a year. He goes and buys a $30 million house in year one. Yeah. That's not enough money, you know, like that's Same not thing. good education. Because in his head, all he thinks is 100 million, 30 million. I have 70 million left. But that's not how this works. Like mm. taxes, what if you get injured? You know, what are your provisions, your contracts? So Property like, issues, yeah. All these things, like that is too much of a house for you, man. You gotta be into like a $5 million house save your money, preserve it, start investing, and maybe on your third contract for 100 million, maybe you're still playing, you're not dead, got a concussion or anything, 10 years later and you truly have a career, then you go, hey, 
I've earned that $30 million house. It's okay, we can go buy it. We have 100 million in the bank, you know, we can buy cash, there's no more financing. Like everything makes sense. But because that instant gratification that all the other players in my team, they all got $30 million cribs. I gotta go buy that because I gotta keep up. That's the problem. You know who did that very well? Ochocinco. I don't even know who that is. Uh, Chad Johnson, he basically is a football player, but he spent most of his money Right in real estate investing, mm -hmm. and he bought he bought fake jewelry, he bought like fake clothes, mm -hmm. just cause like he looked the part, but like he's not spending the money. Mm -hmm. So he, he saved eighty three percent of his of his revenue for his whole career up until now, but while most players spent most of it. So that's but, a good point. But my argument is that's that's exactly what you want to do. You want to go invest it. Yeah. But why wear the fake jewelry? Why not stand in your ground and I don't need this if you can't afford it? Yeah. Why not just not wear it and say, yeah, I just don't want to wear it. Like, like why, why wear a fake watch? Why not not wear a watch? Mm. Like, like that is the argument. The argument is why disrespect yourself in that manner? Yo, that you know, is the argument. You know, it's funny. So I met PJ, right? I used to wear a Nixon, uh, gold Nixon, right? And I was like, you know what? This is a cool watch. I'm gonna wear it around like millionaires. And I'm like, hold on a second. They're wearing like APs and like freaking Rolex. I'm like, bro. I'm not gonna wear anything at all. I don't wanna be that and that's person. That's okay. And, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. There is nothing wrong with saying, I don't have this yet. Yeah, yeah. And that's the problem with society today and young people is they see things and they go, the way I'm gonna fit in is by having the same thing that guy has. Why would you have a $400,000 watch on on year five year journey when I'm on year 20 on the exit line? You know, and I'm like, yeah, I have $10 million in watches. So I, didn't see, I didn't see your journey. Right, but I what I'm saying is that that's what happens, right? Yeah. Oh, I want to fit in, so I'm going to be these. I can read that in 10 seconds. Like, mm. that guy's poor. You know, like, what what kind of car he bought, what he did, the way he walks, the way he manages to, to what he claims to be. We can read that like that. So you're not going to be invited anyways. You know what I mean? Like, you're mm. not going to fit in because we know you're not authentic. So that's where the difference is between people. So if you're gonna be incredibly like well done and like just someone that's like, hey, I'm, I got the right mindset, you don't need to become someone other than yourself. And that's what I'm trying to argue. At 20, I was me. And me wasn't good enough to get in certain circles and that's okay. Me wasn't good enough to be invited on certain podcasts and that's okay. Me wasn't good enough to be like a success. I didn't need to fake my success with fake Forbes articles or this and that. People would reach out to me and be like, hey, you wanna do an article to say you're in Forbes? No. Why? I'm, I'm not in Forbes. Like, oh, but you can then put the sign. No, I don't care. Like, I don't, that's not, do you want to do an article on me? Like, are you interested in doing, oh, no, no, you have to pay me. Okay, then no, I'm not no, no. interested in fake press. Like, like the, it's the ego thing, right? Like, I'm interested in the work. The business is making real money. That's interesting. The, the, the idea that my friend or that random guy will be like, that guy was in Forbes. I don't care. 99% of people on Forbes are in jail. Like what I'm saying, it doesn't make, it doesn't matter, right? Mm. Like it's not important. And what I'm saying is what we have lost in that idea of success is that we're interested in appearing successful. We're not interested in the grind during the grind phase, mm. which leads us to the successful part. We're interested in, I appear successful. You guys should know I have a Lamborghini and I have this, this watch and you know, I'm going to these restaurants free or not, you know, I'm getting in these clubs. That's the success right there. And it's not, right? The success is the power of leverage of money in your pocket. That's real success. When COVID shuts down, you go, I don't care. When your business, they go, sorry, you're done. I file a lawsuit against the government. No, I'm not. I'm still going to be operational for the whole time because I can spend $300,000 in litigation the whole time while my business still doesn't lose $20 million in revenue. So this is leverage, right? This is power. Mm. Not my random nobody friend thinks I'm rich because I have a similar car than him or I wear a similar brand watch, it's just a cheap one. No, that's failure because that is gonna hinder you from getting to that real person 20 years from now that is incredibly successful and, and has real leverage, you know, and can say, we wanna start a business, let's each throw in a couple of million bucks, you know? You know, it's funny about that. So I met a billionaire from Puerto Rico. He came to um, visit a friend of mine and he's like, you know, you know when I, whenever I walk into a room, what I look at? I don't look at your watch. I don't look at what you're wearing. I look at how, how healthy you are, mm -hmm. how you speak, what you're about. Right. And that to me is more important. Like than your what philosophy, you, like exactly. what you're about, right? So not what you have, but who Be you are Because as what, you're, what you are is your value system. Yeah. And your value system is either developed or undeveloped. Mm. And that tells you a lot. That's why I'm saying you can't fake the room. You know, you can get in with an SVG, but you can't fake what you are. So, because how you think is who you are, right? Mm -hmm. And what you have, it's not always who you are, you know, it's who you are temporarily. 
So that's where the big differences are. And that's exactly what we're talking about, you know, like so. But a lot of times also some things have to make sense. Like a lot of times people aren't watch people, right? Which is okay. They're not car people. They don't want to drive nice cars. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But they still have clean cars. Maybe they don't have the latest World Source or Ferrari, but they have like a nice Lexus, like a nice Mercedes, the latest model one, you know, like something they drive mm -hmm. because money is irrelevant to them in that regard. You know, they're not going to be like, I drive a Honda Civic because I don't care about money. You know, no, nobody no. in their right mind drives a Honda Civic for any given reason. You know, like unless they have to, which is okay. And that's what I'm saying. It's okay. But it's also okay to know where you are and not try to be more than you are. Like there's guys out there that'll say, I own a Corvette because it's the best performance thing. No, you own a Corvette because you can afford That's a Corvette. That's what you can afford, yeah. You can afford a Corvette and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with a Corvette. But be honest. But be honest about why you have it. Don't be like, I bought it because it's faster than McLaren. No, you bought it because you can't afford a McLaren. You bought it because you can't afford a Ferrari, and that's okay, at some point you will. The moment you start lying to yourself about why you own it, is the day you stop trying to get to the real goal, even if the real goal is not a McLaren, it's a Ferrari, it's a Lamborghini, it's a Kona, it doesn't make a difference. The point is, you can't justify failure by, by just taking mid-level success and amplifying it in a way that's like justifying why your position isn't better. Damn. Yeah, I mean, what works for me is that I always stay humble, I'm willing to learn, and I never, I'm never boastful. You know what? I'm like, cool. I'm in this room. I'm going to be the richest person here, but I'm willing to learn and see where they're at. But even the word humble can be misconstrued. You know, like the idea of humble is to be quiet or to be a listener more than a talker. I think to be humble is to stand in your truth. And your truth can be fought for. And your truth can also be completely fought for as long as it's been negated by you. And this is the argument that you make about, like when you talk, I, in my last book, Gator Choice, I talk a lot about consciousness and how to become more conscious than like an average human and just get to that stage where you're in full control of yourself. When you think about consciousness, you have to think about it this way. Your truth, which is not universal, like everybody has their own version perspective of truth, right? Is only as universal as can be, as long as it's negated all alternatives. Now, the humble part to me comes as your ability to undertake new information and question your own truth over and over as you go. So a lot of people don't do that. They don't question their truth ever. Mm. And this is why they get stuck. So what does that mean? Like, let's say we'll use something as simple as saying, maybe you didn't agree with COVID vaccines, right? You had a position immediately. You're like, I'm anti this. No problem. Like, that's your position. As new information came, did you factor that information in? And, and question your position? Mm. Or did you just say, this is my position, I don't care what happens then? If you did that, you'll never become conscious. You're basically living in a bubble with no identity. Yeah. If you're someone who can take information quickly without that ego barrier and constantly reprocess your, like, like you tell me there's one way to be successful, I said there's another way. Maybe have negated all ways you've already thought in your head, but you haven't gotten to my level of success, so you, you can't negate mine. So right now, even though, you might have some truth in your mind to what you believe is success or not. Mm -hmm. You can't negate mine because you haven't gone through my journey. Right. But I can negate yours because I've been through your journey. Does it make sense? Like I've been at your level and I've already negated that. But you can't be at my level to negate this. So where humbleness comes in is to realize the levels of life in which you're playing and when it is important to fight in your truth and when it is also important to stand there and listen for more of that data to be able to reestablish a better value system and a new truth. Damn. Legendary, guys. Okay, man. Uh, it's kind of hot in here, but with all your cars, bro, this is amazing. I'm not going to lie, man. I'm inspired once again. And uh, yeah, catch you guys in a bit. Peace.